Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. Everybody please rise. Pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, hey, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, thank you for showing up. I appreciate it. Um, appreciate all the council members to be here. So full participation, really like it. We don't have a lot today. We actually have a special guest, Dr. Keller. Uh, he's going to speak uh, on a, a project that they're working on. Uh, so we'll just go through. This is um, the agenda that we put out last week. This agenda will be following. Uh, we did have a public hearing last Thursday. Uh, for the uh, proposed 2022 budget. Um, all the council was here. Um, not too many people in the, in the audience. No questions, no issues that were brought up then. So hopefully we'll be good to go. If there's any questions or anything, just let me know. Uh, okay, next on the agenda is approval of the August 22 uh, meeting minutes. I have a motion to approve the meeting minutes for the August Town Council meeting. I make a motion that we approve the meeting minutes for the August Town Council meeting. Do have a second? I have a second. All in favor? Uh -huh. Say unanimous. <clears throat> Next is the approval of the August financial report. As the council members are looking at the report, I should have had this on here. Uh, these are our five uh, uh, bank accounts that we have. I'll just go down. If you'd like to see it, just let me know. Today, general operating account, we have uh, currently 248 k The Schoolhouse Museum Fund has always been $1,000. <clears> the Splosh Funds uh, currently are $18,970. So $18, FEMA Fund Accounts, uh, $1,884. And the American Rescue Plan, Thirteen thousand two hundred fifty-seven. So I just want to make sure we're tracking. This is a deposit for heritage today. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not just heritage days. So there were some booth run ons that went on there too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need uh, <clears throat> yeah, in the memos. Okay. <clears throat> As you can see for last month we had uh, a lost local option sales tax deposit of ten thousand eight hundred fifty one. Do you have a motion to approve the August um, financial statement? A motion to approve the August financial statement. A second. Do you have a second? <laughs> She's got it. All in favor? That's unanimous. Okay. Summary of maintenance. Jerry not here. Is that working? Yeah, I texted him, but he didn't. Okay. All right, so no summary of maintenance. Looks like things are good going on. So. Uh, old business, we'll go into it. Heritage Days update. Okay, Heritage Days uh, is looking good. 
we currently have a potential, and I only say potential because <coughs> there are um, uh, confirmations that we haven't received the forms for yet, but 50 booths. Um, last year there were 40 six booths, which included uh, three or four food vendors, but right now we have uh, 32 vendors, um, some of them, uh, six of them have double booths. We've already had two cancellations, unfortunately, one was due to a family illness and one was due to um, a, an obligation that came up that could not be changed. So we're in good shape there. We have uh, potentially nine food vendors. So we've got barbecue, wings, chicken, uh, basically whatever we need to fill in. Um, a company called The Smokin' Texan. They're fantastic. We have The Shack and Joe's Tacos on Sunday only. Um, we have Dixie Kettle Corn, who will be doing their kettle corn, Louisiana egg rolls, Mississippi pickles, pickled eggs, sweet tea. We have gourmet cookies and baked goods, boiled peanuts. Uh, Mr. Odom will be back again with his steam engine ice cream truck. And we will also have the um, big red truck doing ices, not ice cream, the ices. So we're doing great on that. Um, people are contacting us. Um, just want to give a huge thank you to the Pickens County Chamber of Commerce who has just been enormously helpful in their support for us, the contributions that they've given us so far. Um, no Pickens has really helped with promotion and we're getting a lot more traction on our Facebook page. Um, vendors are contacting us because of the support that we're getting from No Pickens and Jasper Georgia News Facebook page and the Pickens County Government Facebook page and then some miscellaneous others like Moose and Annie Mercantile who always share everything and um, <laughs> your family shares everything. That helps a lot. Um, and so we are getting traction and uh, inquiries from all kinds of new folks, new food vendors and regular merchandise vendors. So we're in good shape there. <coughs> Um, as far as sponsorship, too, we are doing well. Coca-Cola of Jasper is uh, a premier event sponsor, as is Woodland Capital. Um, they are the company who is developing the Valley View Farms, the <coughs> new subdivision here in Talking Rock. So they're both our premier event sponsors at $1,000 each. We've got Old Mule House, Think Bank, and then we have several in-kind um, in-kind donations as well. AgPro is going to uh, provide us the tractor. Anderson Tent and Event is giving us a discount. Community Bank of Pickens County is providing ATMs. The Pickens County Chamber of Commerce, again, what they've been doing has just been about invaluable, um, probably about a $500 value or more. No Pickens is doing um, an immense amount of work for us. Uh, the Talking Rock Brewery and some others. So to date, we have, as far as sponsorships, both cash and um, in-kind, a value of a, about, probably a little bit more, $5,825. And as far as our booths, we are at about $3,400. So we are in pretty good shape right now. Um, we are in pretty good shape. Our entertainment program is shaping up as well. Saturday and Sunday are both filled. Um, Saturday morning we will have the opening comments and hopefully color guard. We're still working on that. We've got Busted Melody, Mr. Childress is going to be singing, and Randy Dobson in the Orange Wall <coughs> will be singing Saturday. And then Sunday we'll have the non-denominational service along with coffee and rolls. And then a bluegrass and gospel um, act out of Ella J um, called Just Because. And then Loose Shoes Band is a really fantastic, fun band playing from one until four. And then Talking Rock Brewery is um, sponsoring a band from four until eight, and I just don't have the name of that, but that's on me. Um, we've got Ducks for a Duck Race. We've got Miscellaneous, um, the Bounce Houses, the Axe Throwing. So. I think it's going to be a good event. We just need good weather. <laughs> yeah, that sounds really yeah. good.
Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, I wanted to give a shout out for uh, Michelle at the Chamber of uh, Commerce. She has been, you know, she's working herself uh, 15 hour days, I'm exaggerating, probably more. Uh, for the Marble Fest, and then she takes time out to help out our ladies, and she has been over backwards to help us out. And again, I can't emphasize enough, and I'm going to keep beating that drum, we're getting the help from the county and so many great folks, and then so many great volunteers, the Three Marys, <laughs> and uh, plus everybody else that have done phenomenal. Uh, and again, I'm super excited, nervous, uh, but super excited. Uh, so I think it's going to be awesome so I do appreciate that and you said that for the sunrise services we're going to have coffee and rolls you had mentioned that yeah. you wanted what's to a do roll um, donuts oh, yeah. donuts yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from the north I don't know sweet roll good old southern you know, roll. we call them donuts a donut okay <laughs> a round thing with a hole in it. but what if it doesn't have a hole that's a hole I don't know it's a rare hole <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, no, that's just awesome. I like that. And so we're having our next meeting Sunday? Yes, sir. Okay. And Steve, any updates on the color guard? I'll be meeting with them on Saturday. Awesome. Excellent. Okay. Is that our meeting? Yes. Saturday? I, I can't. Okay. Yes. What time is that? 10 o'clock. All right. Unless you want to come for breakfast at 9. Yeah, I'll be there at 9. <laughs> yeah. okay. Awesome. Anything else? Okay, great. Thank you so much, Mary. Okay, uh, next is uh, new business. Uh, first one on the agenda is vote on the 2022 budget. Uh, so if you guys came in or outside the door, it was published in the paper for the last week or two weeks. We did have that public hearing last week. Our proposed budget for 2022 uh, is 119K. Um, everything was laid out. I spoke to the council and we went line by line. And I, there were no questions. Um, so it is the highest budget that we've had, that Taco Rock has had, uh, but as you can see, we've done a lot of improvements. We're going to continue doing that. So a lot of that comes out of our general operating fund, and so I think the numbers match up. Plus, we'll have, we'll look at what we do at the end of Heritage Days and some of the things that we do to recoup some of that cost. Okay. So with that being said, I do have a motion to approve the 2022 budget. I make a motion to approve the 2022 budget. Do a second? Sorry. All in favor? All right, it's unanimous. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. All right, uh, next on the agenda is vote on the partitions for the park restrooms. So Don had passed out this email from Jerry. You guys should have all seen that email, and hopefully you guys have looked at it. So this money has already been allocated. Uh, that's not the issue. The issue is you guys voting on which one we need to go for. So as you can see on that, if you have that document, and for the audience, uh, we had some recovery funds, that's what I call it, because we had damages last year for the flood, and our maintenance contractor, Jerry, uh, had identified that the partitions uh, in the public restrooms had got destroyed, molded, warped, whatever, for from the flood, and so we're going to replace those things. We've done some uh, temporary things in the last year, but these are going to be permanent solutions. Uh, he went out and got a couple quotes. And there's different materials for that. So we've already voted on the funding. We've already received the funding. So um, that's not the issue. The issue is to uh, identify what would be the best. So I'll just open it up to the council. Well, I know we didn't have time to go over this before the meeting. But when I looked over, the only thing that made sense to me was the solid plastic. Mm -hmm. Everything else, that you can't submerge it except for the uh, Blackboard, which is even more expensive. Okay. So if you can't submerge it and it floods again, that means you got to replace it again. It makes sense. Okay. All right. So then, uh, any concerns or questions for that, you guys? No, I agree with yeah. that. That was my choice as well. Mm -hmm. It has a longer warranty. The price is right in the ballpark. That that was my. Choice. Any any. Any recommendations for the color? 
<laughs> whatever, uh, whatever seems appropriate. Doesn't show <laughs> things. <laughs> so when uh, when Jerry works with that, we'll probably have to get involved as well. But we'll ask the recommendation for that. I think black or. Well, did anybody look at the colors or? That they're the basic colors. If you pull down that, if you clicked on that thing, it would pop up. It's just a basic black, gray, white. Maybe some. I mean, black's going to show everything on it. I guess it would be a problem. Mm -hmm. it's it's something okay. more. A gray. 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 And in between. <clears throat> All right, well, so we'll vote on that, but yeah, then right. we'll pick the color. Yeah, I don't think whatever is good. So, yeah. Okay, any uh, other concerns, questions about the style? I, I, I like the plastic, solid plastic. Okay. Awesome. Solid plastic. Okay, all right, it's pretty easy. All right, so can I get, uh, is there, can I have a motion for the material that we're going to use for these partitions, which will be solid plastic? I'd like a motion that we use solid plastic for the partitions. The, uh, okay, do a second. A second. All in favor? That's unanimous. Jerry, order that and then just let them know if I need to know what it is. How we're going to do it. Okay. All right. Uh, next on the agenda is uh, building inspector update by Mr. Hall. Well, not a whole lot to update this uh, <laughs> this month. There's no been no uh, new new uh, permits or anything. You know, obviously we had some few inspections and everything, but pretty quiet. Nothing really going on. Okay. Nothing going on. Awesome. Newsworthy. Newsworthy. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Anything else? All right. Yeah, I told you it was going to be short and sweet. So uh, next on the agenda, we'll turn it over to Dr. Keller, uh, Dr. Robert Keller. Uh, sir, I'll go ahead and pull this up. Okay. Mayor, Council people, thank you for allowing me to speak with you. Uh, I'm Dr. Robert Keller. I'm the CEO of the Atlantic Coast Conservancy, the Pelican Coast Conservancy, the Magnolia Coast Conservancy, the Emerald Coast Conservancy, and the Crescent City Conservancy. Uh, when somebody told me to be entrepreneurial, I kind of paid attention to something like that. Uh, we've conserved over 150,000 acres across 16 states, uh, so we've done very well. Uh, and one of the things that's nice about land trust is, and, and, and most of you know land trust, they're usually giving a tax benefit for conserving the land. But ancillary to the business that we do, we do other things in the community, whether it be we provided band uniforms for Pickens County High School, we provided some money for the park across the street from our office, and we've uh, purchased some things for the, for the town. But one of the things that's really of interest to me is enhancing our green infrastructure. As most of you know, we don't have a lot. We don't have too many trails and we don't have too many other things. And one of the things that I got interested in back in probably 2011 was working with something called Rails to Trails. Uh, can you get the first slide, please? So Rails to Trails is something that's kind of caught in vogue with the last 20 years. What they've done is they've taken advantage of old rail bands. Oftentimes you'll see, and, and this is something I've learned in the process, you have three types of rails. You have active, and you have inactive, and you have something in the middle. What we are here is something in the middle. And most of these projects that have occurred have been on inactive rails. So what they've done is they've taken up the rails and they've used the grade for uh, creating pedestrian and, and bicycle paths. Beautiful trails, usually beside waterways, just like we've got here, uh, through areas, even though they might be uh, urban in nature, they're very scenic. I mean, in, in this, this little stretch right here, this mile and a half right here from Talking Rock Inn, is it's like a pasture. So you've got such beautiful areas, and the infrastructure is already there. You have bridges, and you have uh, pathways. You have a nice grade. And most of these people have taken advantage of this and, and created these wonderful trails. Next slide, please. So this is kind of a list of rails to trails. You got big ones, you got small ones, you got ones that are really close to the railway, you got ones that are really far. What I want to do is tell you about two of them specifically. Next slide, please. This is one that's in the work. This is called the Saluda Grade, and the Saluda Grade is about 31 miles of track that starts in South Carolina. And you can go ahead and hit the other side for me, please. It starts in South Carolina and runs all the way up into mounts of North Carolina here. 31 miles, and that saluted grade meant that it was the steepest grade in the United States for a rail bed. 
they're working on it right now, and a lot of land trusts are involved in this. And to be able to have a place, I mean, what a destination this would be if you could go out there and ride 31 miles. When I did my dissertation work in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, we had Cades Cove, and every Wednesday and Saturday they'd close the Cade, the Cove off, and everybody bicycle around the thing. Just such a wonderful thing, and such an economic stimulus this would be for this South Carolina, North Carolina area. Next slide, please. This is one that is really caught on down in Atlanta. This is called the Beltway. And what this is, I mean, it's basically going around the city of Atlanta, and the infrastructure for the businesses were already there, but they really did not have a connector. Next slide, please. And this is what you've got. This is what it looked like once beforehand. It was an old railway. So they took up the rail and they created this pathway here. And it goes, it's this circuitous uh, uh, path that goes around. A lot of it has been created. A lot of it's still under design. But this has been such an economic stimulus. And this sprung from a master's student uh, having a thesis in regards to creating this trail. And what a wonderful usage of public funds and, and the economic stimulus to Atlanta and, and the other ancillary benefits that I'll get into later are just phenomenal. And we've got an opportunity to do something like that. Next slide, please. This is what I'm calling the marble trace. And the reason this is kind of the Natchez trace, I just thought this would be something cool that we've called marble and marble heritage. And what I envision doing is using crushed aggregate is the base for the trail. You know, you can make it nice and smooth even though it's aggregate. And hence, the marble, and, and, and I think having a trail that would be made of marble would be phenomenal. So we've got this wonderful, you've got two bookends of trailheads here between Talking Rock and Tate, and this is an 11 mile linear distance here. And what you see in here are the schools, and you know Pickens County High School is right there off the trail. Next slide, please. And here are you guys, so, so let me back up just one here. If you would, please. Can go, uh, that, that's, that's all right. No, 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 no that's okay. We're, 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 so, so, and what we've got here, and I'll go over this here shortly, we've got 24 intersections from Talking Rock to Tay, and most of them are very small, as you can see. Now, next slide. So this is you guys here. This is Quentin Park. And I started this back in 2012, and I talked with Johnny Weaver in regards to doing this, and everybody was just wonderful about it. And that was back when CSX Railway still had the the railroad rights. So starting off here, I envision you guys being one of the trailheads, one of the one of the bookends of this 11 mile linear loop. Next slide, please. And what you've got here is you've got parking spaces for several people. Now, folks, a lot of stuff has happened here recently. The Inflation Reduction Act, which is providing a lot of stuff for electric cars and a lot of stuff in regards to climate change. We installed an electric car charger in front of the Conservancy. What I'd like to do as we go through this is install one of these electric car chargers here and also put one in tape as we go forward. I don't know that we're going to save the world with two or three car chargers, but I think it speaks volumes, and mine is always used right there in front of the office, but I think it speaks volumes in regards to the cachet that we do have electric car chargers in our towns. We got one in Talking Rock, we got one in Tate, we got one in Jasper. We got a couple more in Jasper, but I think that it probably speaks volumes. And there's a lot of people driving electric cars now. I'm sure you see it at the brewery all the time. We see them all in Jasper. Next slide, please. This is the one I was looking for. This shows every one of the intersections between Talking Rock and Tate. We've got 24 of them. This distance between your first intersection is probably the greatest, but a lot of this area is very rural in nature, and most of these crossings are very rudimentary. Uh, next slide, please. So this is what this is Twin Mountain Lakes, and this is Ace Hardware down in uh, in, in Jasper. Most of these crossings are very they're just primitive, and not in a pejorative sense, but they're, 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 they don't have crossing gates. Uh, very easy to access, doesn't have a lot of protection on it. Uh, next slide, please. And what I envision, and you're looking, and any time you go out there and you get on the railroad track, take a look both left and right, you've got a lot of space. Now, one of the things that some of these rails have done because of liability from the railroad, they've put a fence, but I don't like that fence. I would much rather see us to be able to put a path. Now, the railroads, oftentimes, when you're doing this, they'll say, 
we've got liability, we're going to get pedestrians hit, we're going to do this, that, and the other. I would argue, and of course we've got research to demonstrate this, that the railroads are safer when you have a trail because the people are still going to be out there walking on the railway even before there's a trail. So if you're going to have fatalities, I think you're more apt to have them then. And from what I understand, as the train goes past, it doesn't go past 10 miles an hour. Is it, has anybody else heard that? It's, yeah, it's a that's little, right. It's, it's a slow rail. So I don't think that, that that is a problem, and we've got research from all these other trails that, that pedestrian uh, fatalities are not a problem here. Next slide, please. We've got a couple of places that are really kind of outstanding. Now, this is the Lumber Company Road, and this, as most of you, you'll be coming across the top. But as you look under it here, and it's a little close in nature, but I think we can still get a road, and I'm talking about 10 foot. We're no longer than 10 foot. And so you can picture a 10 foot paved path. It would either be here or here. Uh, where it is, where we start out and where we end up, may be two different places. We may have to cross against the rail uh, in some of the places, and you'll see what I'm talking about as we go forward. Next slide, please. This is Doris Wigington Park. We put security gates on this. My organization did this. We were hoping, and, and, and that thing is a bird sanctuary. One of the things that's nice when you have a linear trail of 11 miles, you need somewhere in between where people can park, you know, and just have little bite-sized pieces of the trail. I envision this being, and there's a parking lot here, but it's, it's very primitive. If we were to be able to pave that and make it to where you have an access here and you could get on the trail there, and that would kind of cut that 11 mile up. And, and, and of course, the railroad does not want you to get on the trail at their their access points, but I think this would be a nice way of putting it in the middle. We already have a park there. Uh, Mayor Lawrence, I think they're going to put some bicycle trails, but that needs to be a pedestrian park. I mean, it is a bird sanctuary, a really cool place, but that would be our kind of a midway. Next slide, please. And Woodbridge, the Woodbridge Tavern Bridge, which used to just be the old Woodbridge, you can see here, and this is this is kind of stuff you're having to deal with with the rail company. I finally established contact with Patriot Rail, who was in charge of the rail, and I sent them a couple of maps and sent them this picture and said, we would like to engage in a conversation with you guys in regards to doing this. And the guy said, I appreciate your interest, but staff of our railway. <laughs> and said, don't, and don't go <laughs> on. And all I've done is step out there to take a picture. In this particular situation, and remember what we've got. We've got the Wood Bridge, which is now open here. We've got all sorts of shops that are in downtown Jasper. If you came up off of the rail grade and came up to the top, you'd have a trail, you'd maybe a parking area or something like that, and then come back down into the area there. That's one of the little choke points that I think that we would have to do something. We would have to deviate from the rail bed. Next slide, please. And this is, of course, is the Jasper Depot. Uh, and, and most of these pictures were taken in 2012. I've updated some of them. But you've got a nice area here, nice parking area. People could get on here. They could go either north or south. Next slide, please. And this is the main intersection that we would have to worry about this. You could either do the trail here, and you've got, you know, and I think that if we were to put crossing lights, that that would be enough. We've seen it plenty of times. You know, I don't know that Georgia is really high in regard for uh, pedestrians, not like California is, you know, where they see you walking anywhere close and they'll stop for you. But we need to make it to where the people are going to be safe as they go across. Next slide, please. This is one of the important parts here. This is Pickens County High School. This is Dragon Drive. Uh, one of the things that bothers me, and next slide please, and I hate saying this, being an ex-Special Forces guy, this is the way my mind thinks, but if I were going to cause folly at that high school, I would do the Jesse James, I would drop a tree in front of a train and drop a tree behind it, and I would have my way, and, and guys, it's not funny. Because the county is worried about this. If we were to have this trail, this could also serve as a secondary ingress egress. And Chris, I know that the sheriff's department has talked about this a lot. So this isn't just for for uh, recreation, but this could also be utilitarian in nature. There is an existing road here, and and what happens at basically at Pickens at County High School, the railway becomes no longer Patriot Rail. It becomes and I think it's Tate Mountain Estates who owns it there, Dan, isn't it? I mean, oh, it's Walter Davis in that one. And they've leased it back to Patriot Rail. So we would have to get permission from them as well to be able to do this. Next slide, please. And this is the Pickroy Road, uh, the Royston Bridge. 
that is just so narrow up there. I mean, you can just barely walk on the top of it. So we would have to come down off of there as well. And as we go back in towards Tate, next slide, please. And then this is where the old Tate Depot was. Remember, it was right there on the tracks. Next slide, please. And now they've moved it across the street. So what we've got is we've got these two bookends. And, and next slide, please. And now in, in uh, Tate, we've got all these, this, the, the old, what was the name of the drugstore name beforehand? That's Tate was it was a Tate drugs? I mean, they, you call it, call it, said they had the best chickens ever. What was it? Egg salad sandwiches in the world. But but this gives a lot of parking area. And one of the things that I would like to do is also put an electric car charger there because at that talking, I mean at the at the Tate um, depot there, they've got a new rail display and there's supposed to be some huge thing attached to the railroad. So the the cachet of saying we're paying homage not just to the marble and, and, and to our community, but also to the railway and most of these uh, towns, LJ, Blue Ridge, uh, Woodstock, they're all on that railway. I grew up in North Carolina and a railway went right through the middle of our town. So this is the lifeblood that we've got here. Next slide, please. So what happens when you build one of these trails? You've got the direct impact where visitors spend money in the restaurants, they come here, and this would be a destination, folks. People are already coming up here, and you know, and, and, and kudos to you guys in regards to your heritage days. And full disclosure, Amelie Godfrey is my partner. The chamber is doing wonderful things, and it's nice to know that they're helping you guys because we all benefit from this. But they're going to spend money, and I heard you somewhere that you guys had like a new outdoor store in regards to hiking stuff. What a major, <laughs> what a major boon this would be to have people coming up here for bicycles and, and, and all sorts of gear. Indirect impact, the restaurants are getting stuff from out of the community, it's coming in, and then we've got the induced impact where we've got workers at the restaurants that are spending their time. Half the workers right now are at your open mic night over at the brewery <laughs> from, from, uh, from uh, downtown Jasper. Next slide, please. And one of the things that we really don't look at is the health benefits. I don't know how many of you guys come into Jasper, but more and more people are using the sidewalks. I myself have lost 30 pounds. I'm out there with the Nordic sticks going at it. But I think that when Main Street Fitness closed their doors way back when, I think Jasper got fat. I mean, we, we really did. And if we had something like this, Think about the health benefits that go along with being able to get out there. We don't have anywhere to go. The track team from Pickens County High School used to run past our place on downtown Main Street, and I'm surprised we haven't had a fatality there because there's no sidewalks. So there's nowhere for them to do it. This, if we were to build this, I guarantee you that we could record how the health benefits would go up. Next slide, please. This is called the Swamp Rabbit Trail, and we've got land on this in Greenville, South Carolina. They've tied themselves up, and you can't see it here. It's called Prism Health. So it's called the Prism Health Swamp Rabbit Trail, where they're emphasizing the health benefits of having a long-distance trail like this. I talked to Denise Ray at Piedmont Mountainside. They, I'm, the next presentation I'll be doing is to their board. Everybody loves this. This is such a good idea. And not only is it going to make us healthier, it's going to bring in a lot of money. It's going to provide a lot of green infrastructure. Next slide, please. And this, is, this isn't you guys, but this is almost what you're going to have here. This, uh, in and of itself, this 11 miles, I believe, would be a major coup for us to pull off something like that. Now, what you're probably going to ask me next is, what are your next steps and what do you want from us? Only thing I want, I can get my own money. I mean, this is, and I've been working with Senator Warnock's office, the sheriff's uh, department. No one sheriff, I think of Chris Stanson, I think of the sheriff's department for some unknown reason. Uh, Chris forwarded me a grant from uh, Warnock's office, and it's like Connecting Communities Grant, which is an 80-20 grant in regards to doing stuff just like that. So I got in touch, with, in touch with Warnock's office. They called me the next day. I mean, they are hot for this, to be able to do something like this. If we were to be able to land a grant to do this, what we need to do is we need to ask very nicely to Patriot Rail, will you consider this? I don't, I don't think that money is an object. I would almost be willing to buy the right of way on the rail. And we could move it back away from the rail bed and deal with like 
470 private landowners as you go along the way, but I'd much rather deal with paying for the rent. It would go so much faster if we could do something like this. And one of the things, and I know that they're not going to let me do this because I asked them, Dan gave me an idea a long time ago, evidently he went out to the Golden Gate Bridge and they rode bicycles across the Golden Gate Bridge and then they got on the ferry and came back across. Think about how cool it would be if you could park your bike here and you could ride however far you wanted to, but you could get on a gondola car that would bring your bicycle back to where you dropped it off. Now, CSX Railway said, Kelly, you're crazy as hell. There's no way in the world we're going to let you do that. But on a Saturday, why would they not? Why could we not do something like the Blue Ridge uh, Railroad or something like that to facilitate an open gondola car? I don't know how many people have you caught up to Tweetsie in North Carolina. Having something like that, that would truly make us a destination. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this grant for 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 a uh, hundred thousand for a million dollars. I'm going to put up two hundred thousand dollars of my own money, and what we're going to do is we're going to try and get this planned. And if we could just get started, if we could just get the railway to say, this is a great idea. Well, let's at least explore. I just don't want them to shut the door in my face, which they've done so far. So when someone asks you. What about, you know, what are we doing about something like this? Think about this. This would, I mean, if there's a downside to this, I don't see it. And I know that they have vandalism of these things, and, and you and occasionally have, yeah. you occasionally have bad things happen. But bad things happen in other places, too. I don't know that that is one of the downsides of this. Questions, anybody? What's in it for railway? I mean, well, uh, Community involvement, I guess, you know, I, and from what we understand, the rail travel is coming back, the, the, the usage of the rail system, and that's what we've been told. Um, I, don't, I don't really know, other than being good guys and good neighbors, to be able to say, look, we are aware that this would be an economic stimulus for the community. Are they incurring liability by doing this? I'm sure they are, but I don't doubt that that's going to be negligible. But once again, trying to get them to open themselves up, and like Calandrum said, look, they've got 50 feet to the left and 50 feet to the right. They just want you to stay the heck out of there. They don't want you in there. But I think that if Piedmont Mountainside, and that's where I want Denise more than anything, go, guys, we need that. We need that for the health and welfare of our citizenry in Pickens County. And I, I, I think that that might move the needle. But I hope that the folks from, from Talking Rock and the folks from Tate, the folks from Jasper, the next time they're asked, they're going to say, hey, let's, let's, let's think about something like this, because think about the stuff that will pop up along the stores, the ice cream shops, the, and the people coming into town to spend their money, and hopefully they'll go home after they spend it. <laughs> Good luck with the railway. It, it's been a, a, about a 40-year you know, kind of uh, liquid asset. And, and they, they uh, the, the ownership has always been very whoever it's been, and it's it's changed. Yeah. Uh, and the concept has long been that commuters coming back, but that's just way off in the distance. Yeah. You know, and, and you know that that's that that seems to be what I would think you'd be up against because you know um, commercials not really going to be where they want to be all the time. Uh, so the nature of the rail may change on you. They, they may want to increase the speed, change the rails, you know. But I don't know that that's mutually exclusive with another safety yeah, of the, the trail right. and, and rail traffic. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of those other ones, they are on fast rail systems. They mm -hmm. just, you know, people just stay to the trail. Right. And we could, there are other things you could do. I don't like the fencing, but, but you could. You could fence it off mm -hmm. and you could make it a little bit more difficult for people to, to get on the rail. But think about all those intersections. You go across that rail every time you go across your thing here. And you're very, there's very little protection. Yeah. I walked across it from the parking lot <laughs> coming over here. And I, I don't remember trespassing or doing anything terrible. And you're right on track, too. I, I like your idea with marble. Uh, uh, great because I mean you've got marble and that's yeah. you, you, you might even have support with you know Huber Hansen. You, you I know. think that they would and that's just waste yeah. aggregate. You know we're not looking right, for right, the top right, stuff. Right. We just want want the just flash. Flash. Yeah. yeah just and just mash it. How much space do you need? How much room do you need? Ten feet. Ten, ten feet. Okay. And, and and I'm sure that as you do construction, you probably widen it out to fifteen. But as the trail moves back in, ten feet. 
and the rail railway has 10 feet under the side, right? They've got 50 feet. Oh, they've got 50 feet mm -hmm. on either side. And so I offered you really to don't have to encroach on anybody's property. That's right. Okay. That's right. And we could, and, and using geographic information systems, which I do extensively, I can pick out those landowners, but all you got to do is have one or two that go, no, we don't want you there, and you're, 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 you're stuck. Getting the rail system to go along, however distasteful you, it might be. If you did have to have, to have their property, it would just be a simple easement. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And that's what we do. We write these conservation easements, and they could get a tax benefit from it. If Patriot Rail would do this for it, they could donate the easement, and I could see to it that they get a tax benefit for it. So that might be another way of scratching their, you know, getting their attention. Mm -hmm. We have our neighborhood, the Meadowlands. You'd have to see that because that's our one of our gates goes over the railroad, and it goes through this wood line. So. It'd be interesting to see how that would work out because it's pretty tight. We're going to fly our drone and we're going to go from one end to the, the other and we're going to make it where if you press the button in 35 seconds you should go from one end to the other so you get a look at it. Most of it is, is very rural. There's just not a, lot of, uh, not a lot of neighborhood out there, very few people. And then in some places it's really close to the track. There's a trailer down here at Twin Mountain you know, that's thrown near on the tracks. But I think it's doable. I think money is not going to be an object. Uh, one of the things that I've tried to cajole Steve Lawrence, and I think you guys should consider it too, there's a lot of wealthy, generous individuals that live up here amongst us. I think we should begin, and I mean we, the collective uh, public, should begin to finance things for the city. We should, we have done that there in Jasper, and it's very easy to do. People, people have got deep pockets, and we should be writing grants, and we should be asking everybody that comes up, can you help us? Because I think that everybody's yeah. seen now that we've become a very viable option up here, where once upon a time, especially in Jasper, there were crickets at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, and now we've got people coming in. Just remember, the crickets are very pleasant after 5 o'clock in the afternoon. That, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm liking the breweries and the wine bars. There was a... There was a, a program on HBO and I told Tony this, it was called Our Towns and their summation was that they found out that the rejuvenation of cities, there was a positive correlation between their success and the number of microbreweries. So the more <laughs> microbreweries you get, the more success you have. Yes, ma'am. Who handles the, the maintenance of it? The Patriot Rail? That's, that's very good. Most of the time the organization, the land trust does that. And what I envision that we would put somebody on there and you would have some people like they do on the Appalachian Trail where you have range runners or ridge runners, have somebody that's out there every day that's mm -hmm. riding the system. And what I envision is having mile markers. And at every mile marker you potentially have like a police call box or an emergency where someone in, in peril could hit the button and of course that's probably going to be a bunch of kids out there pressing the buttons but it's better to have that but at each mile marker you'd have someone that would sponsor it and they would pay money and that would help with the upkeep too but I, I envision the land trust doing that. Okay. That's what we do also. We, we have to monitor the properties to make sure that they're in compliance with the deeds of conservation easement. So this trail you're talking about it it would end here at our Clifton Park, or it continues up north? That's the, that's the good part. I think that if we did something like this, I think that Woodstock, I think that L.A.J., they're going to go, how do we connect? Yeah. And you know ball ground would ball ground go, yeah, well, how can we, how can we add just from, from Tate to ball ground? And, and I think that, that you could get a 31 mile, you could get that long trail, and, and I think that that would make us a destination more so than what we've already become. What are your roadblocks now? What do you project timeline and things like that? Five years? My main roadblock is is the railroad. the railroad. I've got to get them to at least say we will consider it. And if they consider it, I think and, and if I get this grant from you know with Warnock's help, I think that they will pay attention to that. That they will take that a little bit more seriously, especially if it pays something for them. But they ultimately might say, Thank you, but no, stay off my railroad. And and there we are. But I think that collectively we could say, look, this really makes a benefit for us. We've got research that says you're not going to be at peril and you've got no more liability than you already do. Please participate in this. Yes, yes, that's fine. You're going three years. 
whole thing? Could be. I mean, you know, you would truly have to hit the hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. if, if, if Patriot Rail were to agree and say, yes, go ahead, what's make the, What's the hermits, I guess, that can be done? I, I wish I could give you an intellectually thought out mm -hmm. answer, but I don't know. But it, the county has the ability of construction. We might be able to do some of that stuff. I mean, we've seen that happen before. Are you keeping up with uh, Patriot Rail uh, further north? between the Blue Ridge and the uh, LAJ run, uh, they, they've been clearing track and, yep. and things like that. So, you, 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 I mean, it seems like a good way of uh, potential um, cooperation, helping them keep the area clear. And, and I've spoken with Frankie Rigman from Fannin County. You know, they want to do a rails to trail out to that trestle, out where John Roberts' place is, Dan, out there on the Tacoma, you know, where the old trestle is, which would be a wonderful place. Now, that's inactive rail right? mm -hmm. that, that spurs off to right. that thing. So I think everybody would be part and parcel of it, and that might be the next thing to reach out to, mm -hmm. to Gilmer County and to, uh, and to Woodstock and some of the municipalities and say, guys, you know, let's, let's see if we can't, like, begin to do this. But three years, that's, that, it'd be tough. Yeah. Doable, but I'm getting any younger. Yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to present this. Thank you, Dr. Keller. I appreciate it. It was really informative. So please let us know if anything that we can do to get involved. And let's keep our fingers crossed. I like that idea. Anything to the folks down here and promote our businesses is changing the culture of what we do down here. So. Awesome. Okay, um, so that concludes our meeting. Uh, I'll open it real quick before I continue. Any questions or comments from anybody? Thank you. I have a question for Dr. Keller. Um, do you um, have that presentation that you could share with us? Or it's, on, it's, on the, it's on the flash drive. You okay. keep that one. Or website. And if or you need me to get in front of people, I'm an old college professor. I'm, she, I can meet you. You'd like to do that? Yeah, there she is. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, all right, so uh, if you look on the agenda, our next meeting, working session, is Thursday, 6 October. Now, we're going to have a public hearing. Uh, we have uh, a citizen that has requested a variance, um, and that will be posted here for the month of October, as you were, the month of September. And then we will have that public hearing at 5.30, even though it's a working group. We'll have the, the uh, public hearing for um, that individual. And then we will transition to the working group and then to our um, council meeting. So next council meeting is 6 October at 7 o'clock. And that is our last one before Heritage Day, so we're excited about it. Okay. Uh, once again, uh, I just made this comment. I was talking to someone here earlier. If you look around, and I know Mary and Dan can attest to this, and the council members, it's awesome to have uh, people really getting involved in our council meetings and showing up. I remember several years when it was just four of us here <laughs> in the attorney. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate anything, any recommendations, comments, things that you guys have to help us continue to grow, to move forward, to do bigger and better things. Cool. Awesome. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. All in favor. All in favor. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Awesome.